Welcome to The Downside. My name is Jamarco Cerezi. I forgot my notes. Can you pass me my backpack, please? Oh. Uh, uh, I'm working on trying to... I realize that my intros for this show are not always... They're not clean. If, if you're a new listener, and we need new listeners uh, uh, in addition to our wonderful fans... We, uh, I need to make it clear. This is a, this is a place where we get, where we complain, where we kvetch, which, uh, uh, which is Jewish for complaining, and and we let we have guests on to just talk about what's shitty and what's bad, and and it doesn't matter if it's personal or, or big or small, uh, and and it's it's a comedy podcast. I'm, I'm so gonna work close on this. To you. <laughs> Do you are the new couches okay? Like this? No, they're great. I'm like just this. getting used to it because I feel like this we're, is okay. We're in a love seat. It's this because is called love seat, right? We brought in we we got new couches. Yes. And I don't know if you've ever had this hat where someone brings a new piece of furniture. It's a big to-do in New York City. Mm -hmm. And then we put it in a 90-degree angle, and it it wasn't right. Didn't and I was it. like, I uh, hyperventilated. Yeah. It felt like I was moving and not moving. Yeah. And uh, so this is okay? This is great. I like this. I like our guest is right across from us. I like that. It feels strong. It feels good. <laughs> uh, I'm just getting used to how close we are in this setting. But it's kind of nice. Yeah. There's like some nice physical. I can do a lot of. Do you feel? Forgive me. Do you do you ever feel like people like hit you? They they like they go like 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 a pat. Like they be they they like give you like a oh yeah oh the, people love a big guy like doing That's, that big guy's shoulders yeah yeah or like, yeah or like this part of the arm they're like there's a this haunch <laughs> you can really like a haunch you can really hit it you know do you do you ever go like okay no I'm not no I, I don't mind it. I don't mind, mind it. it I I mean I would mind if they were like patting my belly. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they were like that would make me uncomfortable. But it's generally like, you know, like a. Uh. We're here today. <laughs> I think our... it'd be good if you put the guest in the corner. You cornered your guest, like, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. you just like yeah. surrounded them. And yeah, you know, and I was just like right here. <laughs> it is tough, man. Putting making a podcast studio in a New York City apartment a huge mistake. Mm. And I know they're going to raise the rent. Like the, the, I know the moment this is perfect. They're going to raise the rent, and we'll yeah. have to go. Yeah. There's a podcast. There's a free podcast place. It's down the street, and it's like the glass is to the street, but it, you can rent Wait, it. Wait, why is it free? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Some some New York How do they thing. make their money? <laughs> I don't I just cannot imagine podcasting while looking at homeless people actively in front of you. Yeah. And and then being like, don't worry. If this podcast lasts long enough, we'll be, we'll be right there next to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, Isabel... We'll get to you in a second. Sure. I uh, but feel free to talk as I as I please. Share this thing. Um, <laughs> I got. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out a format for like the intro. I feel like I want to say like one shitty thing that happened that week. Mm -hmm. But then when I thought of a shitty thing, it was so shitty. I was like, no, it's sad. It doesn't frame it. What well. is it? It's it, you know what it is. The shitty thing that happened this week. We've oh, both posted oh, about. It. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, that's not. No, so that's it's got to be. It's got to be shitty and far away. Yeah, no, that, right, that's right. not. It's got to be further yeah, away. Yeah. yeah. I uh, I uh, so I did want to share. I did get an email. I got an angry. Uh, uh, you know, we've been talking a little more about our political views. Um, not that this is a po political podcast. No. But we've been talking a little more about uh, uh, Israel and Palestine. And I, I did I did get this this email from from someone, um, and I, I think it ties into this podcast pretty well. It says, uh, uh, "Your repost of that anti-Zionist meme." I don't know what this is in reference to. It says, I am so sad that you have chosen to side with the, quote-unquote, from the river to the sea crowd. I was your biggest fan. Now I unfollowed you on all the platforms, including your podcast. It is not Israel's fault that Hamas hides behind its own people. The death of civilians in Gaza are on their heads. Israel's first responsibility, as with every other nation on Earth, is to protect its own people. Meanwhile, your spreading of this meme and other hateful misinformation makes things unsafe for all Jews worldwide. Shame on you. Mm. Okay. Now, first, let me just be clear. When you disagree with me. On some political view, and I don't mean to, this to be too cocky, but it is to a degree. You unfollowing me, it's not a big deal. Yeah. People unfollow me because I posted a joke that wasn't very good. Yeah. And now when you unfollow Russell, Oof. that's a problem. Yeah. Russell, he sees it. I see it. My number is not affected. It says two hundred fifty. It impacts me and my family. <laughs> Uh, so I wrote back. I said, you know, in my my, I, I'm sorry, I'm not. As you wrote back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry because they emailed me through my website. That feels the most personal way to contact uh -huh, me. Yeah. 
message, Instagram, whatever. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not as comfortable with the mass murder of Ill- innocent civilians as you. Something like that. Got him. Thought that might change his mind. Now, he wrote this back, and let's see if we can all play this game. They said, I will answer you in a language you'll understand. You are kind. Oh, sorry. You are young. Life has been kind to you. You will learn. I'll miss your theater kid jokes. Goodbye. Quick trivia. And sorry to the listeners who think I do too many theater references. What is are those song lyrics from? I don't know. I knew right away what musical took me a little bit to narrow it down. I have no, no Isabel, no. You should know this. You'll, okay, I'll sing it now. Um, you are young. Life has been kind oh, to you. Oh, oh, oh. You will learn. Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. It's Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. Okay, okay. Now, who sings the song that they are referencing as, as pearls of wisdom for me to clutch onto? Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. That is correct. Yeah. The barber. Who gets his throat cut. Who murders a bunch of innocent civilians <laughs> and ultimately kills his own wife because he was unable to distinguish mm-hmm. that she was her. Mm-hmm. Bad, bad, bad reference. sample. Bad example for Damn. for wow, this thing. Got him. This is the downside. You're listening to the downside. The downside with John Marco Cerezi. So thank you for being here as well. Thanks for having me. I, uh, you, multi talented stand up comedian, writer. Uh, Viola, vi- violist. Whoa, violist. Whoa, violist. Yes, yeah. violist. violist. How did you practice that before she came? No, it was okay. off the dome. I like violist. 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 That's like someone who's really into veal. Yeah. People usually say violist, but I've never heard violist. Yeah. Now that you've said that, I f- now forget violist. Yes. Violist. Yeah. Um, we're not the classiest of podcasts. Let me just say this out the gate. I love tar. You love tar. Love it. I, I met someone who uh, does photography for symphonies, and they said, "Ugh, Tar's nonsense." It was they, they like it was a uh, they 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 talked about it the way that I talk about what's that show about the late night host? Oh, that was um, dreadful. Oh, well, um, Mindy Kaling one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't remember. Late night. Late night. Yeah. And they were just like, "How accurate?" That's the that's the thing. Not accurate. Was I it mean- fun? I'll tell you, he's a photographer of a symphony. I'm a violist in a symphony, and I thought it was pretty damn accurate. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. First of all, all the musicians were actually playing, except for the one concertmaster who was like the wife of Kate Blanchett. They were all actually playing, which I think you don't see in movies a lot at all. Um, you guys talk about that in movies. You were like, yeah, they, they it looks insane. It. If you oh, know how to we, play an instrument, yeah. like Mozart in the Jungle, like the people playing look like ridiculous. It's like clowns, you know. Like you're like, what are they even doing? What do so, they do? Like compare, like what's what's the motions that the actor like, does? Like so, it should be like this, you know? Uh huh. Like, yeah. yeah. And you're just, there's no way that. It's, it doesn't look. <laughs> yeah, it's the same when you see like a fake band, like you know, like the guitar player. It's the same kind of thing where you're like, that person's not playing clearly, or like yeah, drumming, yeah, yeah. drumming when it's not drumming. I did. We talked about it, but I did a movie where the extras were in a band on a late night show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and well, the, the saxophone player, yeah. the saxophonist was playing, <laughs> but his mouth wasn't on the mouthpiece, so he was just like jamming. <laughs> Like smiling, uh, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm there, and it's. I'm like, it's not my responsibility to <laughs> I like to, to, to say to uh, a Billy director. Crystal. Uh, <laughs> this guy's fucking it up. Uh, but man, did it look that stupid. Is so funny. <laughs> that's that's why you can't get rid of you. You can't uh, AI generate extras. No, you you, you you'll lose those, those magical oh, moments. Want to see an extra who doesn't know to put his mouth on the. You just you just uh, finished filming a movie. I did. Did you have extras in it? Yes. Uh, did you use an extras casting director? No. I, I, I asked people who I knew to show sure, up. To sure, sure. But we used all real musicians for because it was a m- movie about music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a movie, movie about viol- violists. And it was a music- movie about musicians, and pretty much everyone who was playing was actually playing. That was like a big thing for me. Uh-huh. I wanted it to look real and be actual, like live captured string quartet music. 
Um, and I, cause I think it's more compelling like, cause the, even like the facial expressions of people, if you're not actually playing, it's going to be like contract. You're going to be like pretending like you're into it, but if you're actually playing, you're actually emotionally moved by what you're doing. So your face is going to show that. So I think cinematically sure. it's just even better. It's not just a sound thing or like a technique thing. It's like, you're missing out on like the actual emotions. Well, in your mind, would you rather have someone who's not as good an actor, but the playing is that, okay, yeah. sure, sure. If they're going to play. Sure. I think I think like certain disciplines you can't. I think they said uh, uh, Leonard Bernstein, who's playing him, Bernstein, uh, Bernstein, Cooper, right? Cooper, Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper, that he like learned oh, God. six minutes on a piano or whatever. But the bottom line is, there's no way it's there's sure. no way it's as good. The yeah. same way I thought was so interesting when Daniel Day Lewis did Nine mm. is that I'm really self conscious about all these comments about people going. You talk about theater too much. It's okay. I'm gonna keep no. pushing through. Mm. Screw them. Screw them. Yeah. It's your passion. Screw them. Your podcast. Uh, Dana Day Lewis, he, you know, he's no one's works harder than him, and his singing was dog shit. And it was like, yeah, because you can't, you can't just learn how to yeah. sing. No, you can't. And it's like, I don't know. It depends on the movie and what yeah. the priority is. For but, uh, you know, if they're playing for like two seconds in a movie, then you're sure get someone to fake it. But if the movie is like about a musician, well, you know, I think too. I feel like there's a crowd of actors these days where they think that. The time put in gives them some kind of extra credit. They're like, like Brad Cooper had that quote this week of being like, "You can't just jump into a, a film six months." Like I've been working on this for years, and you're like, ah, "Cool, man." Like, still, like that doesn't matter. That impacts me in no way when I watch it. Sure. Am I being like, "He did this for seven years"? Wow, great, cool. Uh, I, you know, a lot of times people do that stuff, and then I'm like, I'm still seeing a dumb makeup job and a, like a silly performance <laughs> that doesn't do anything different for me uh you know because oftentimes it's like just hire someone that can really do the thing that you're looking for a yeah. lot of times i don't know about his movie maestro but natalie, i'm just saying like natalie portman in uh black swan there was some like you know her extras did a lot of the ballet moves i'm like good great you know what you know what i i've never admired in a ballet their acting abilities yeah so so it's fine it's still a great movie yeah. but What's more misrepresented in media, playing an instrument or stand-up comedy? Stand-up comedy. Yeah. Well, it's always terrible in media. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it. I haven't seen everything about each thing, so I couldn't really say. But like in Maisel, for instance, like she's doing a different bit. Every, she's doing a different five minutes every time you see her. Yeah. That's the most <laughs> una like. That's insane. <laughs> she should have been doing the same ten minutes all four seasons. Oh my god, oh, that's, that's really so like, funny. She just started. Yeah. But that's all stand up things, like you know Seinfeld. Like you're always seeing a different bit. Yeah, in so funny. even in yeah. Crashing, which was made by comedians. Yeah. He's doing different bits every time you see him. At least with Crashing, he was doing like his existing old material, which yes. is a cool. That's cool. Detail at least. But I. That's why I think at least with music. You're playing the hits. You're playing Mozart. So the yeah. music is real music. With stand-up, I always say, if you're going to have stand-up in a show, go pay a comedian $10,000 for five minutes of the real act, and it'll be so much more authentic oh, yeah. than making up some fake stand-up for and the having moment. a make up a Che Diaz <laughs> like routine. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, horrible. I need to watch some of it. I had an idea where I wanted to, like, I can't do a Che Diaz, but, like, do movie stand up like in the middle of an actual set for an audience to so just show how flat it fell. Like transcribe one of Maisel's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would do, but I honestly need to get someone else. I couldn't find enough examples. Che Diaz would be great, but yeah, obviously great. I can't do that. Right. Uh, and then like a lot of the other ones, they're just so specific to the story. They're so like, yeah, it would, yeah. the audience would be freaking out. Yeah, you out. need a lot of context. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. like learning a monologue. You're like, I'm going to learn the stand up routine from. Crashing yes. episode three, season two. <laughs> yeah. And I've also done things like that on stage and it does, it feels just awful. Yeah. It feels just awful for the, for the audience to be like, what are you doing? Cause you can't respond to them. So yeah. you're really, you're really, it's, it feels the same way as I would on like a hidden camera show. Oh. I'm like, I'm pranking yeah. you guys. Right. So Isabel, we've, we've known each other a while, but, but, don't never, past, spoken. never spoken. Never <laughs> spoken. Um, but but uh, uh, you you've you've you in terms of the viola. How, to put it blunt, how successful are you at that instrument? 
Are you at the the highest of your field? Are you are you a work like if you could put it into stand up terms? I know these are they're so different, but many similarities. Like how how do you feel about your role? My ability as a violist, to put it bluntly, this is how I describe it to people. If there were the viola Olympics, I would qualify, but I wouldn't win any medals. Okay. So I am a pro. So a loser. Yeah, but I'm a fucking loser. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I'm I'm very good. I'm like I'm I'm top, you know, but there are so many people who are like really like better than I can think of all the people who are better than me. You know, like I'm mm-hmm. but I'm like competitive with them, but I I tend to botch performances and like I'm just really? I'm like at the at the end of the day I always fuck it up with the viola. But but that's that's like with like solo competition. Like in terms of like playing with other people and being hired to like back up like pop singers and stuff like I have a great sound. I can read down a chart. Like I'm I'm as good as you're going to get for that. If I'm being honest. Yeah. We, but <laughs> live. So live is is that a struggle? Do you you get nervous? I have a long history of performance anxiety where my hands shake. And so even if I like know the piece left and right, I just in the moment my heart beat is too fast and I just screw it up. Like I screwed up a lot of my auditions while I was in school and like just a lot of lo- Did losses. Did you ever try uh, the beta blockers? Yeah, yeah, no. And I still sometimes will use beta blockers and I don't like, I'm not afraid to talk about that. It's like, sure. it just slows down your heart rate. It's not like steroids. It doesn't make yeah. you better. Yeah. Um, but it was like, it still wasn't quite enough. Like I still Could you really feel the head. difference? I thought about yeah. it. Oh, After were- I did a Comedy Central taping, I was talking to uh, Kate Willett. Yeah. And she, she recommended, because I get, I get, so anxious. And I used to, at the beginning of stand-up, would have a shaky hand. Yeah. And I always get scared it'll come back. Well, I I never take them for stand-up because I actually like being a little shaky for stand-up. Sure. There's, like, less physical. It doesn't screw me up because it kind of, at least for my character on stage, it, like, helps almost. Uh-huh. But with viola, I need to be completely relaxed because there's so much detail that I that can be messed up, really. Like, in, with one, you know, shake. Of course. Um, but would they really work for me. They They do. Would people hear it when you like, do they hear it slightly or was it like you had to stop and go, sorry? I, I never had to stop. Um, it was the type of thing where like a few times I think anyone could have known. And then a lot of times like the untrained ear probably would have thought it still sounded good. But like all the judges would have been like, yeah, she was shaky or like she was oh, tight God. or her, you know. Oh. Um, so I, sh- and I was getting injured all the time, like repetitive stress. So it was just, it was a very like doomed pursuit for me. Where was the injury? Um, my left wrist and shoulder, mostly my wrist and like my hand. And is it because you were, I mean, is it just that's what happens or were you holding just, it? I mean, it's like a, it's a, you know, contortion. Some people are just built better than others. Like I just, I think I could have worked harder on like solving it, but I also just was like, Ugh. like I was kind of looking for a way out. Yeah. Also. If I'm being honest, but it's just people are different. Your body, it's like you're an athlete and like athletes sometimes get injured. It's like that kind of just, it can just happen. Yeah. So. Did you ever play any instruments? Um, I played saxophone How and uh, seven years, eight years. Um, What the fuck, man? I can like play chords and things on piano. If, if I, I had to learn in music school, I had to learn like everything a little bit, but like I couldn't do that anymore. If I had a sax, could you like. Yeah, I can still play it. But not great. Nicole's better than me now because she takes lessons. You don't share enough of your life with me. I, I mean, I did it Nicole's in middle school. Nicole's taking sax lessons? I had no idea. You didn't know? She talks no. about it all the time. Yeah. No. She's been doing it for two years. Oh, God. Is that tough with the. I did sax for four weeks, and I could tell my mom was like, oh, we don't want. She did not, could not put up with me practicing. Oh. It was always like if it was past yeah. 6 p.m., she was like, oh, God. And so yeah. I didn't have any support. I didn't want to do it to begin with. Yeah. What would you play if we had a live show and I just said, we got a sax here, Russell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Can you? Some, I mean, I could learn it, probably. What would you play? I, I I don't have a song off the top of my head that I play. You you tell me what this is a, like. sh- a shocking thing to ask. I, you don't yeah. have a song. I was in a band. I was in middle school and high school band. I wasn't out at jazz clubs. If you gave by me a guitar, playing. I would play another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. And I did that in eighth grade graduation. I okay. still could do it. Okay, okay, okay. Or I just do like the beginning. I do the first three notes of Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. Oh, you just do down, bow, down, bow, bow, and that would be it. Uh, um, what do you went to music school? Yeah. 
what school did you go to? Uh, Juilliard. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, you said you're in a group now? Um, oh, you're not in a group. Okay. I get hired occasionally. To, like I, I play Got in it. groups, but I'm not in like a core. Okay. I'm not a core member of anything. Got it. Yeah. Wow. So Juilliard, that's crazy. I feel like. Eh. Was it? I feel like. Was it? What was it like? I mean, uh, do you? Okay. Uh, so I went to music school, but I was in the wrong place, and I didn't really like music school. I hated it. Um, I also felt like I didn't fit in with music kids that much. Mm. Sometimes it was so stuffy. And you're a comedian. So I just was curious if you ever felt like, relax, you know, like, or, or no, you, you felt like. Or are you that person? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't feel like I fit in with comedians. And I don't feel like I fit in with a lot of me. Like I, I always other myself. Uh-huh. Um, but with musicians, like I found like the chill ones. Like I, I had a pretty good time at music school. I just like also knew while I was there that I wasn't going to be able to sustain a career in it. Like, yeah, I like, we, I enjoyed school while I was there, but knew that I was screwed. Yeah. So why now is that just, is that your outlook or you could feel like, Oh, I don't have the, skill or the ambition i didn't have the ambition uh i felt like i didn't have the skill of very down myself just like super like i i convinced myself i was just like the worst violist on, in the world but like obviously i know that's not you think true. julia just let one in like yeah every year. I'm like, like how'd i get let's in let the worst one in too just to yeah. give I the mean, kids perspective i will say like because i play it sometimes my act now and playing it for like just people who have maybe never even heard a string instrument before and like seeing their faces like light up like it's kind of been therapeutic for me because i'm like oh like i i am like good at this like this is like a special ability i have sure. and like just bringing it to like anywhere playing like in comedy clubs or like wherever it's just like you kind of realize because when you're at just plays like juilliard like you're just comparing yourself to like the top 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 one yeah. percent of players sure and you're in like stuffy concert halls all the time but like just playing for people it's just like just play, you know, and like everyone yeah. loves it. And yeah. even if I mess up, and no, no one cares, no one even notices. I I think uh, when I think about it, we had one we had one girl in my middle school who did music. So I'm curious, like the beginning, because I felt like I saw her as like I was like a lazy kid. I did school, I got fine grades, but like she was practicing hours and hours every single day. And I remember when I was in my 20s, and I found out she had stopped. For me, I was like. I don't understand because I'm very much a, I want to be the best at a yeah. at a thing. When you first started, how old were you? Five. Five, and is it family musical? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad's a jazz saxophonist, and uh, mm, mm-hmm. mm, daddy. Um, <laughs> and my older brother is a very gifted, high achieving pianist and orchestral conductor. Oh, um, so, so I had yeah, you know. And were you? drawn to it from a young age like did you was he always playing around would he play you to sleep when oh, you were a baby <laughs> no no Ooh, um no he would just like play really loudly in the living room on the piano you know like yeah. oh my dad yeah yeah yeah. no no my dad never played for me he would he would like sing us to sleep a little bit that's sweet me and my brother we shared a room you I know always think but if i had a kid i'd be singing a lot yeah yeah so. it's, it's a nice thing if you can sing sing for your child sing. you know yeah my parents yeah. did your parents sing for you mm, i don't remember it but maybe would you sing, or were you just like whatever workshop you were doing? You'd yeah, whatever, whatever I'm working on. Whatever. It would be tough to not use my kids to help me memorize lines you know for <laughs> sure. Um, so, so you started at five, and what? I mean, are you like going hard right out the gate? No, no. And I start, I start on violin, uh-huh. and I hardly. My dad would make me practice. Was, we like fought all the time. He had to bribe me to practice with like Beanie Babies. And, and did that work? It did. Well, how how many Beanie Babies per hour? It was like every week that I practiced every day for like a while. I got a Beanie. I got a lot of Beanie Babies. I got a every every couple years or so. I think my dad money gets tight, and he calls me and he says, "Hey, can we sell the Beanie Babies?" And I say, "Dad, I don't think there's any money. They're not the worth Beanie anything babies. anymore. No. I tried to sell mine. You did, and they were worth. N- I missed the boat, so then I just gave them to my little cousin. Oh my God! How many did you have? Do you think? like i mean not that many maybe like 40 oh i had like maybe they'll come back around you know yeah i i get mad when i see like beanie babies clearly they started selling out a little Mm -hmm. like they started doing branding and now it's like ronald mcdonald beanie baby and i'm like get the fuck out yeah who was your favorite i had a cat named nip i know nip yeah black and orange well there was chip who was black and orange then there was nip who was just like brown Uh i had both and then I had um, 
I had uh, Nuts the Squirrel. I think squ was the Squirrel Nuts. It sounds right. Makes sense. Yes. They, yes. <laughs> uh, for me, mine was Spot. Spot was oh, like. I, I loved Spot. I don't know why, but like, I swear, I could see it now and you'd see it in my brain, some kind of recognition. I lost Spot. Oh. And, <sighs> and I, oh. the, the one Beanie Baby that I, I really, the, the rare ones. I mean, I never, the only rare one I ever had, I had Princess Diana like a little bit early, not at the beginning. beginning. What? Wait. Princess it was a Princess Diana? Diana Beanie Baby? Oh, yeah. Like the dead. They made like a person? Yeah, 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 but it was a bear. It wasn't like her oh. corpse. It was a. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> was it, it was before a bear after she named died? Princess Diana? I believe it was like the anniversary of her death. I'm not sure, that but I'm pretty so sure it was weird. post her being dead. Because I, I had no connection Diana. to Princess Diana. Well, they made a lot of bears. Bears was like their thing. Yeah. And this one was purple. And they usually had like a chess thing. And it was like some kind of flower bouquet. Yeah. And there was a time where it was like the thing. And my dad, you know, thought he'd get some points against my mom if he got me. And we had it in a case. But there were. Did you ever collect Beanie Babies? No, I mean it was it. exciting, and and they had like the the uh, malfunctioned ones. So there was like there was a light blue elephant, but there was a, like a dark blue mal. There was there was spot, but they forgot the spot, and that was worth oh, right. at a time a thousand trillion dollars. Wow! And or quackers without the wings. Quackers without the wings. Yeah. Um, oh God, what were th yeah? There, there's ones missing legs, and and these were like. Factory mishaps that someone got fired for, <laughs> yeah. and then resulted in. Uh, there's, I should. They're making a movie about it. What? Who? They're making about a whole what? movie about the whole Beanie Baby, because it's a whole market. Like, and then how the, do you not flood the market? The how do you Beanie Babies or about the creation? Like, the, like Barbie, the rise. Like Beanie Babies. It was big. Beanie Babies. I'm were not. Huge. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I believe. And you. now they're at fucking gas stations and yeah, and it's it's Peppa Pig Beanie Baby. Oh yeah. And the All poems success. are terrible. <laughs> the poems. The poems. Oh. What poems? In the heart tag. Yeah, you swear to God, it's like you don't live in this world. <laughs> there, in the heart tag, there'd be a, a four line. Uh -huh. I believe they were couplets. Or maybe it was... Uh, You're saying they're bad now and they were good or they were always bad? Well, I was You were moved as a kid at the time. Yeah. But it was like, this is a dog. His name is Spot. Uh, his behind has a slot. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. Less sexual yeah. than that, but um so your dad would bribe you with beanie babies. Uh-huh. And my mom my mom was a uh food for good spelling test. That was my parents' bribe. Food like for like that you needed for nourishment like, or like nourishment. a treat. She'd give you, you food. get breakfast. <laughs> no, it was like it was like I'd get a second hostess cupcake. Pretty low stakes. Pretty low stakes. But also, two hostess cupcakes is too many hostess cupcakes. That's why you have an eating disorder now. I think so. <laughs> That's why you're eating all those carrots. Just what were like... your parents' reward system? Um, I mean, it, I think it varied because sometimes it could be like a toy thing. Sometimes it would be like we're getting Pizza Hut for dinner. You know, it could be. I think they varied it. That's it the kind of stuff. Like... like if I had a kid, I um, I have a million questions, but I Google like. Is reward based Good. teaching okay? Yeah. Right. What kind of behavioralism am I allowed to use on my child? What have they tied this to later in life? I think like it teaches your kid that something will make them happy when it won't. So it might lead to a lot of dissatisfaction when really, if you just teach them to enjoy the work without the reward. Yeah. Sure, sure. Good luck. <laughs> Good fucking luck. Do you think you would have kept playing the instrument though if you didn't have the reward? And I, and maybe maybe that would be. A I wish I had a different life for you. I think that's admirable that your dad did that. I think I would have because he also guilted me because there was a time when oh. I was okay. like, "That's it, I'm quitting," and he was like. I mean, okay, you might regret it. And then I was like, no, 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 I can't quit. Like, like yeah. I was so scared of that regret that he, you know. He... Is that all it took or would it fester? You'd be like, I quit. What was the longest you quit? I never quit. Yeah. I just said I wanted to quit and would cry. And then he would say, like, t whatever, and then say, do you want to quit? And I'd be like, no, you know. <laughs> I mean, I think there was a part of me deep down that also just, like, knew that music needed to be a part of my life. Mm. Yeah. Because it was one of the few things that, like, made me feel connected to the world uh -huh. as a child and I had no sense of any interest in comedy. I know I was funny and I did like impressions as a kid, sure. but I never thought that was anything to take seriously 
or anything I could. I had no idea about like pursuing comedy as a career. I had no idea how anyone would do that. Yeah. Or that even people did that, you know, and sure. then I started mm-hmm. seeing stand up and I was like, wow, that's cool. And I feel like with being good at viola, it definitely doesn't get you points with your peers at regular school. Not at all. Not at all. No, I, um, <laughs> I, to say I was unpopular is an understatement. I mean, I, I was really just invisible. I wasn't like, intensely bullied at school i was really just ignored did you ever get a moment of like you opened uh, assembly and you played a song and everyone went whoa not with viola i have a very good voice um oh, really and i started taking sing like i started doing the voice classes at my school and like we had like a musical theater workshop and i sang poor wandering one from uh gilbert and sullivan do you know that one? From Pirates of Penzance. Oh, I don't really know Pirates and, of Penzance. you know, it's like all high color tour. And like I, I really just dazzled everyone. So like everyone after that, everyone like kind of like looked at me a little different. What year yeah. was that? Uh, it was senior year. Of high school? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so right at the tail end, they're like, hey, like, we oh. should have been an asshole. To yeah, <laughs> yeah, <last."> totally. <laughs> 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 because like uh, other years I like sang to the floor. And I mean, I still sounded good, but I just wasn't as like, I Confident guess I didn't. Or, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, like, for some reason, I just, they gave me, like, a parasol for the, because it was, like, a workshop. It wasn't, like, a full show. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. But I, like, just last minute became, like, a, a total comedian and ham and, like, did the, did a whole thing and got laughs. And that was, like, a big moment for me. Wow. Sure. So, yeah. And I I don't really sing that much anymore. But. What, did, did you ever have a, a a moment where you got to be, like, show your abilities, your performance abilities in a way that, like, your school saw? Yeah, I mean, I did the shows. I did the musicals. Did you do it in middle school? Oh, you did. I did the musicals, but then in high school, I did. Did you get a lot of pussy after that? I didn't get a lot of pussy after that. It didn't really translate that way. (laughs) Um, uh, (laughs) I, I, I did did the musicals, and then I. But but for comedy, I when I I wouldn't do the talent shows. I wouldn't like sing in the talent shows. I w- had to do the sketch. Like I had the only reason I joined student council was because I went to a show and saw when I was in ninth grade. I went and saw the the talent show, and the people who put on the show, the student council, did sketches in between the um, the acts, and I was so mad because <laughs> it was so bad. Uh huh. And they just like stole SNL bits and just did it. And I was like, you can't just do bits from another show. So I was so mad. That I was like, I'm joining student council and I'm going to take over that the show and be like the like do sketches in between. Yeah. So I did that. And do I got video and of it, that. It, I don't know, oh, but cool. but it went well. It went well. I did it for three years in a row, and we we, we as hosts won <laughs> the talent show, which was not allowed, but we won the the last my senior year because that was the best part of the show is sure. was the sketches. So um, I believe it. But find those scripts. Let's yeah. act it out. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So okay, so then you 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 go to Juilliard. We all know, but you've 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 I've I did the research. You were visiting Juilliard what every summer or after school? Um, every Saturday. Where do you where do you live? I live in I grew up in Manhattan. Oh, oh. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> were you going to the symphony uh, as a as a kid? A little bit, yeah, yeah. I was I was around it. I was very you know, I, I was uh, what's the word? Groomed for a life in music. Groomed. That's not the uh-huh. right. That's not a good word. That is. That is. That does yeah. have other meanings. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we've lost it. <laughs> what part of New York did you grow up in? I was also groomed. No, <laughs> um, I grew up in Lower Manhattan, so oh. not, not that far from here. Okay. Uh, should we reveal where we are? I don't no. know. Oh, it's no, okay. It's they fine. know where we are. Stalkers. My face outside. Okay. This window. Yeah. I. Uh, were you like like was like were you going to the Met a lot? Like were you living in artsy? Because your dad. Yeah, not that much. I mean, when, when I, because I was a violinist and then violist, so like, yeah, my parents would like take me to see string players. Like, you know, I think I went to like a Hilary Hahn concert when I was little, and like uh, some other people, like Sarah Chang or these like, like very well known violinists. Yeah. So I'm just to like show me like the best of the best, um, but not like a ton. I, I mostly spent time just like at home practicing. Sure. Um, I would, I if I went to a classical thing. I'd have so much coffee. I'd plan my caffeine intake, and it's and it's and I don't ever mean it as disrespect. Oh, Apparently, my boring. father. It's fucking yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah, but if you know it, it can be fun. It's one of those things. Yeah, where, when you're doing it, it's like Shakespeare a little bit. Yeah, if you're like doing it, you're like 
I'm having a great time. But sometimes when you're watching it, it's not as fun to, when you're doing it. I sometimes. tried so hard to get it. into opera because I, I had like an opera teacher. And for me, I admire just the the greatness of the singers. And I was like, I want to be able to sing like Pavarotti does and do musical theater. Truly delusional. Mm-hmm. And... I would sit in the library with scores open and try to follow along the best of my abilities. And it's just like, I like the big flashy fireworky songs. And then the rest was torture. It was torture. And and I went, I wish I could be different. Yeah. I wish I could, but I, I can't. Yeah. I mean, me going to the symphony, it would be like, let's do this. This is good. And I feel bad how uncultured I am. Yeah. But it doesn't actually mean like, First of all, I the symphony I can handle better than opera because opera, the music itself is usually so beautiful, but the singing has so much vibrato that the pitch gets lost. Yes. And so that you don't actually sense the harmony yeah. and the beauty of the music. It's just like this athleticism that's like funny, like not funny, like fun for a second to watch. Yeah. But then it's just it like I have to be moved in my body by the music. Yeah. So if you're singing like, like, it's like, what are you even getting from that? I, I, I often feel like too, like it feels so that they're so focused on the technical element to it that I don't feel when I'm watching, I'm like, do you know what you're saying here? Yeah. Do you know what you're doing here? And sometimes, sometimes there's rare things where you see a clip of something and like, oh, that's very moving, very beautiful, blah, blah, blah. But I think in general, that's in, when I was in music school, I'd go to watch these recitals and these things. And I'd be like, these pe- like they're so worried about the breath and the thing and the how it's coming out and blah 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 that there's no sort of communicating happening of what is happening in this in this sure but that's like that's that then go to musical theater ultimately it's like I you think can that's do like both what? that's why I get annoyed by opera because it's like I I the the uh, I feel like you can still do that and have that technical thing but I agree with you on the thing too it's like sometimes you'll hear what is deemed a great voice and you're like. I don't know. That's like going so much here and there that yeah. I don't think it sounds that great. Yeah, it's just noise. Yeah. So you're not a snob at all? Or do you hide your snobbiness? It depends what you mean by snob. I mean, I'm very critical. Uh huh. But I'm critical of a lot of things people deem snobby. So maybe that makes me seem like not a snob because I'm like, oh, I don't give a shit about that stuff. But- I went through a real phase of where I was like a snob about, and looking back, it was so foolish. And it was because of a voice teacher I had. Where like if someone's singing wasn't good, I'd be like, yeah, but they were cracking. But yeah, they were flat. But yeah, but uh-huh. but and now I'm like very different. I'm like, I, they made me. They told a story. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But I went through a sn- music. My college years, I was like a singing snob. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very critical. I'm very high standards, but and I guess that makes me a snob in some ways. Uh huh. But uh, I also like enjoy lots of like shitty things sure so what about your peers were there any big snobs there of course yeah of course and i mean within like string playing i'm gonna i'm the ultimate snob because i i know how good it can be so i mean like i'll you know my my partner thinks i'm a snob because he's more in like the rock world so he'll like play me a recording of a string player and i'm just like they suck and he's like be nice (laughs) they're good you know (laughs) it is hard it is hard. I, for me, I think the most snobby is, uh, I think you're the same is acting. There, are, there are people where I'm like, they're they're a terrible actor. Yeah. I, but it's just what you see. I mean, like it's once you see yeah. what you see, it's impossible to not. It's the same with music. There's so much ignorance is bliss when it comes to, to art. I'm not doing it when I'm in a scene with them. Or something. I'm doing it like when sometimes it's on TV or something, and you're like, that person has a, a, a like a. But w- more often than not, if we were to compile all our criticisms, other than saying like this is not funny, I mean, funny is probably the yeah. number one. But number two is just like the acting was was bad, bad. Yeah. and it's just like you can feel it as a vibe. But it, that's yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, but what is bad acting? I. <laughs> that's so it, true. You know it when what you see it. Point. Shut up. You don't think that at all. <laughs> you don't think that at all. You go. Bad, bad, okay, great, bad, bad. 
The other day, the other day, people someone can I, be I, bad and good sometimes. That's the, that crazy thing about it is like you sometimes, of course, not, but, not, the, but the ones we're talking about, I know. You're yeah, talking. but the other day, someone, someone on Twitter <laughs> who I respect as like a, a podcaster and political commentator, like said, like. Natalie Portman's a bad actor, and I want to be like, okay, so you don't know what you're talking about. You could say bad choices. You could say a weird take or, or yeah. even overdramatic. But Natalie Portman is an excellent <laughs> actor. Actor, yeah. You're right. nuts, and you shouldn't be allowed to speak on yeah. acting anymore because if you think that, you cannot see. Right. You yeah. cannot see. Yeah. It made me really mad. I was like, "What?" I was like, "What are you who, fucking who said it? talking about?" It was, uh, it was, it was some one of the hosts of like Chapo Trap House, oh. like posted. I just like like, and I think his, his takes about movies. But when he said that, I was like, "I was like, oh, then you don't know. Then you don't know what acting is." Yeah. They just don't like her face, probably. You know, like they're just yeah. people. People <laughs> like I feel like when people say that about like obviously good actors, yeah, it's because you just don't like them as a, they're like playing on likable characters or they're playing. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. I think it, it's – if you are unable to, like, talk about things that you don't like but you admit are good, you just don't like – if you can't separate I don't personally want to do this and them being talented or not, then you're broken. You, you, can, should yeah. you can see people no in things you. that you don't like and be like, they're great in that. Sure. I hate Goodberg, that. Titanic. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that's what makes someone cultured <laughs> is being able to separate their own tastes from – like critiquing a piece of art. Yeah. Sure. It's like people who are uncultured just like, I don't like that. You know, like yeah, it's yeah, bad. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Like, but if you're like, oh, I don't like understand it or I don't I don't like it, but I think it's good, probably like that to me is all it takes to be like culture. It's like an awareness of like something beyond yourself and yeah. your own yourself's dumb feelings and reactions. Mm -hmm. Are you at the height of your viola abilities or have you dipped because you can't practice as much anymore? Um I don't know. I I don't play that much, so it's hard. I feel like I've become better in a way because I'm looser. I care less, and I have like enough foundation of technique built that it's like I'm not gonna like really dip that much. But again, I'm not playing like the hardest stuff anymore. I'm not trying to learn all the concertos. Sure, I could probably build that back up. It's like riding a bike, but um, I just I don't. So I don't really know. But I I can still make like a beautiful sound and like play like yeah whatever like recording sessions and movie school like things i get hired for that are like not very difficult but they still want good players for you know i'm having a real sorry to make it about myself i'm having a real crisis when it comes to acting mm. where i haven't acted in a very long time like like truly okay you know sketch whatever but i feel like my in, internal bar of what good acting is is very high and i'm like so not even close to touching it that I just I, – I feel – and this is not me looking for, like, advice or that I'm wrong. But it's just, like, I it's it's been really hard to have studied something so intensely and practiced it so hard. And all I see now when I revisit it is I'm like, oh, you are – out of shape you don't even know what and acting is tricky in and of itself it's like it's brain games i mean it's, so it feels like all i'm now is now thinking about what my mouth doing like i'm like stuck mm. and you do you, you balance that with like with stuff with the industry where you have to constantly be like yeah let me get that audition oh i'd love to go for that and inside i'm like they shouldn't put me in that mm. and it's just it's just been a challenge i've been having recently and now that the strike's over i have to like confront it yeah and like just, and you know, because all the, all the, all your reps are just like, no, you're great, and you're like, okay. But the discipline is transferable. Aren't you just applying that discipline to stand up? Discipline is transferable, but I think like I think I hit a point where I was like, I'm not a great actor, and I tried every which way, every technique, every fucking mental game, and I think ultimately I was like. Like, to the, to the degree of my brain doesn't allow me to pretend or buy into or go on the journey of the way an actor needs to do. And I can do other things to fake it, but there's a wall. Right. And so it's really hard. I just think, I just think it's been hard to, like, have a discipline that used to 
that used to be there and then revisit it with that high bar. As opposed to a comedian, not not saying you specifically, but saying a lot of stand-up comedians who get into acting later right. and just, you know, it's new, it's fresh. And so they can enjoy the journey of getting better. It's super new for me and I'm sure. totally enjoying that. Yeah, you like, studied. Did you study it a lot? Like, did you or I did you just go for it? it? I never studied it, but but stand up makes I think makes you good at being at least like your, a version of yourself because you're delivering jokes every night as if they're new, but they're not. Like sure. that's acting in a way. Like, yeah. it, I mean, not every stand up's gonna be a good actor, but I think it's like common for stand ups to be like pretty good actors naturally, not like Shakespeare, just like really virtuoso actors, but like sure. They can, they can be convincing in a simple scene and like yes. yeah. convey be natural and be loose and whatever. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Do you want to act still? That's another it's another uh, I don't know. I've I've been uh I'm in a I'm in a low point creatively. Mm. Um for those who are enjoying the podcast, uh <laughs> join the Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash downside. We got uh bonus episodes. We got our live episodes. We got one coming out with Sebastian Connolly soon. That is so fucking good. I might have to release it on the main feed. And uh, uh, we're, we're mixing up the Patreon. We're doing some new stuff. We're trying. This is not going to be a regular thing. But this time, uh, Russell and I, uh, we watched. We're recording it after this episode oh, in reality. But it's kind of, yeah. it, it already came out. Uh, we reviewed uh, <laughs> Lady Ballers, the new horrible comedy from the Daily <laughs> Wire. So you never have to see it. Unfortunately, conservative comedy movies are not going away. And it's best that we understand why they're bad. So you can... Save your your dads and brothers from oh going God. down that rabbit hole. Um, so you made a movie with a great cast. Yeah, yeah. who's in it? Um, we got Eric Bogosian. We got Dylan Baker, great. Jamie Lee, wow, Dylan Baker. Love yeah, Dylan Baker. From, Dylan. from Happiness, my favorite movie. That movie is so good. No one's seen, seen it. Oh. No one's seen it. It's so it's so good, good and it's so funny. Better than Lady Ballers. It, <laughs> yeah, I love Todd Solons. I love yeah, everything yeah. he made. He was in. Very up, like, picture. that w- movie, people would be talking about that movie on X for three months if it came out now. Oh, yeah. Because of some of the How stuff in it. How dare you call it X? That made me want to throw it in your face. I know, I know. Call it Twitter. I've been, re- I've been corrected like five times in the last day, so I'm, 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 I'm. Oh, that th- you said it made me okay, sick. Okay, Twitter, Twitter, sorry. Ugh. Uh. Anyways, great he, movie. Yeah. He was in The Good Wife, I think. Mm-hmm. Y- yeah, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, because the role, he played like a crazy character in The Good Wife. And oh, it was I never so saw good. The Good Wife. It, it was it was a long time ago okay. before I knew all of Julian Margolis' views. But uh, it was uh, it was a fun show. Yeah. It was fun. It was sexy. It was lawyers. Mm. And I feel like if you're a lawyer, that show probably drives you crazy. Did you Was Mozart in the Jungle, was it like, did, did musicians like it or did they hate it? I hated it. I mean, it was like fun because it was like, let's see what they get wrong this time. You know, like I watched a lot of it, um, but it was it was like a total joke. Yeah. Uh, But to your point, like, would the accurate version be on this episode? They all practice the whole day. Yeah. 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 yeah, That's the thing. The less fun. Well, (laughs) truthful. Not to like plug my movie. Sure. But I do think my movie is a very accurate depiction of at least one musician. Uh huh. I mean, it's based on my world as a as a violist, and like, I think it's it's not just me practicing. You know, it's there's like there are other things you can focus on around that world. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, like all these movies and shows about a world, like music or the medical, like it's like it's never actually the thing they're doing that's that interesting because that's always the same shit. That's like working hard at something, and yeah. and there's gonna be the same kind of politics and same weird personalities in every industry. It's what's going on around it. That's just like the vehicle that you have to like create a story. Yeah. So it's never actually like gonna be good if it's like about too much about the thing and not about actually just like humans doing sure. something. You know what sure. I mean? I don't know. If no, I totally sense. know what you mean. It's more just like then is there any point to try to capture the creative process at all because it always feels fake or forced. Two yeah. that come to mind recently for me are Tick, Tick, Boom. Did you see the movie adaptation? And he's swimming and the notes come together out of yeah. the tiles of the yeah. pool. Yeah. And then my favorite, I only saw the pilot of, of Empire and it was like a woman was singing a, a song and then the, the head producer's like, hold it, hold it. And then goes up and goes like, remember when the cops took your brother? Remember seeing his head go in? roll it and then she does it again and it's brilliant and it's like it's 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 so it's so over the top yeah but i understand what they're trying to capture you know it's like for me the funny moment it's i'm walking down the street and i go oh 
That could be something. And that's it. That's right. not fun to watch. Right. And it's not even you going, oh, it's literally like you walking and in your head just going like, oh, okay. I pull my phone. Keep walking, yeah. keep walking. Do, 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 do. You know, like, yeah, I think trying to capture the actual, the actual creative process is just like bad. Like, I never, sure. I've never seen it done well. I don't want to, like, you can't really capture that. That's just... And it's not something you Black either. Black Swan. I did love Black Swan so much. I thought that was great, but that's that wasn't a creative that's not like process. A crea- that's, that yeah. was like a a dis- That was like a physical thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like different. Someone like coming up with a song and someone like trying to get perfect their pirouette. Like it's yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah. Different, but I'd I'd prefer that. I would rather have a hard work montage. Yeah, a Rocky style. If you're doing comedy, it's just spot, 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 spot. Yeah. Notes, right. notes, listening back, listening back. That's my version of, as opposed to Miss Maisel. Oh, you know, like, I'm yeah. dying like, up here. Like, 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 yeah, you're like, something happens in your life and you go up and then have a new 10 minutes all of a sudden. And you're like referencing that thing. And you're like, yeah. No. I would love, if I ever made, if I ever get to show stand-up and something, it's like, I have that moment and I go to riff and I just bomb for it's ten straight bad. minutes. Just ten straight minutes of, and I show the whole ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that time. Remember, you, remember that time you got yeah, punched yeah, in yeah. the face. I got punched in the face. And, and he's like, I, "I'm gonna talk about and it." I was going to talk about stage. And I said, "I got punched in the face today." <laughs> Fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Fucking crazy. And the audience was man. like, "Are you okay?" What happened? <laughs> it was. There was no jokes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking crazy, man. Um, uh, I uh, I'm trying to. Th- so so you you filmed, you produced. Is it a full length movie? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was. Uh, how long had you had? Like you wrote it. I'm assuming. I wrote it. How how long have you did? Was that writing it, uh, and then like you know this process been? The writing was like. I want to say six months. I mean, I, it was like I wrote – first it was a TV show. I wrote like three episodes uh-huh. that were half hours, and then I picked my favorite pieces and like wove it into a movie. So it was like probably about a year, but a lot of different versions and yeah. things. And then it took me like another year to like plan it and get producers on board, and then like six months in pre-production. It, it was a long – How do you get that cast? That's a killer cast. Yeah, so well, I mean, Dylan the, Baker, who else? Eric Bogosian. Eric Bogosian. Wow. Um, I mean, you can just ask these people. And if it's like – I mean, honestly, I felt really good about the script, so I would just send people the script and hope that they read it. Because if they people who read the scene, like it's such a I big mean, ass to ask someone to read a script. Well, there was one scene with the dad, which is what Dylan Blaker plays, and I knew if he just read that scene, maybe he'd want to. I don't know. I, I think he yeah. read it and was t- and decided he wanted to do it. But sure, you just reached out to people. Um, yeah, sure. you just I and mean, a lot of people ignored us. You know, we yeah, yeah. yeah. We just, you just who did you actually want for those roles? <laughs> no, actually, uh, <laughs> those were those two were always dream dream cast. So, um, and and what who one of them was your dad? Dylan Baker played my dad. Yeah, Dylan Baker played your dad. Yeah, who who's playing your parents? Have you got anyone you want? Oh, and and t- I know who my dad. For me, if I could get my dad. It's fucking Sean Penn at his craziest. It is a hundred percent Sean Penn. Oh, Hook, interesting. Line and sinker. I don't have someone for my dad. I don't know because it's like hard to imagine like what way I'd be t- talking about my parent. You know what I mean? Like in what yeah. way? I'm trying to learn something about you by you. I would. I would question. have Catherine O'Hara as my mom just because I love Catherine O'Hara and I think she can do everything. What is she from? What is she from? It's just the names. I just don't know the names. She's, it's not that I don't okay, know the person. Sh- something your brain will understand. She's the mom from Home Alone. Um, oh, God. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your mom? Yeah, because she can be really funny, I think, and also play a lot of different kind of things. And she's really sweet and uh, uh-huh. can play kind of different things, okay. I think. I don't know for my dad. I don't have someone in my head. My mom, it's like, I think Julia Louis-Dreyfus is the one that I'm mm. like, I would lean towards. Because the tits? <laughs> Does Julie Lear Drivers have big tits? No, no, that's what I was saying. I was oh, trying to. Because my mom. I was. Because you always talk about your mom. I don't always talk about my mom's tits. I talked about her breast implants in the last episode we did. Oh, the last few episodes, probably. But okay. Um, do you, Are you going to feel comfortable when your dad sees that scene? Did you show a side of my, your dad? My dad was on set because we filmed a lot of it at my parents' house. So oh. I think he. So, I don't know if you saw that scene on the monitor, but 
it's just it's a it paints them in a, in a good light i mean everyone's my family's painted in a positive quirky way I mean, they'll love it yeah. yeah 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 my actual brother played my brother wow uh-huh so that i mean he's just him so he saw it <laughs> did he go to Juilliard too uh he went to Juilliard pre-college um and then he went to a different school for college did he ever conduct you yeah and is he a good conductor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but but we we have a sibling thing, so sometimes he drives me crazy just like I'm like, ah, why are you doing it that way? You know, like uh-huh. like in a sibling kind of way. But no, he's very, very good. Yeah. And our conduct I think I always I always get skeptical of conductors, the whole con do do people get skeptical of conductors skeptical. or skeptical? What do you mean? Skeptical of like Do you need them? A A A if they are needed, do they deserve all the movies about them. To be no, no, you need. I mean, look, they're a conductorless orchestra, so clearly we don't need them. They uh-huh. can a good one can really add something. You need them in like a Broadway show because they're literally the. Le- I've played in a lot of pits. They're like the connection between the upstairs and the downstairs, right? Yeah. The yeah, singers, yeah, yeah. And, but like for a symphony orchestra, if they're really good, they add a little extra something energy to it. And if they're not good, then they you don't need them. What pits have you played in? Uh, Lion King, Les Mis, Fiddler, Sunset Boulevard. Now, uh, no offense to those shows. I've heard them so much in my life. I think I would go fucking crazy playing oh, those songs again. And I, I did. Did you ever and play that's like I don't a long? Do it anymore. Did you play like a long term thing at, at those? I was or a were sub in all of them, like, so I was running from show to show. I only cover. I only had a, my own show. It was like a six week run. It was a show called Rocktopia. That was like a limited oh, yeah. co- rock concert thing, but it was like a Broadway show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I was in like two weeks of the Miss Saigon oh, tour. Hello. Okay, good. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> two weeks of the Miss Saigon on in t- on tour, just covering for someone. I never. I mean, I don't know if I would have gotten my own chair, but I never was going for that because I knew I would go insane playing the same thing over oh and over again. Yeah. Some people can do it, and that's great, but I can't. I lose I, my I, mind. It, being in a show like I did the show before this for nine months, and then I'm now in this show, but I'm a standby. So. It's uh, people that do that for years. I don't know. I think it's it's a real. I don't know if the, the skill might not be the right word <laughs> because you're endurance, like you, endurance. Like you really have to be able. It it feels like a certain kind of thing once you're in a show and it's the same thing every night. And I I almost uh, it sometimes feels like in some ways worse than like what I would imagine nine to five is because you're like. You're in this thing. You're blunking it. It's the same time every night. You look at the clock. It's this part of the moment of the song. Oof. I think I think being on Broadway is harder than going to war. Yeah, I think it's harder than being yeah. the doctor. I think you are doing the hard <laughs> and and standby is even harder because you you're not you're not doing anything. Yeah, but you might have to at some point. Yeah, and that's a lot of stress. Yeah, I've I've it was really exciting at first, and 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 it's not not, but I'm. I'm thankful it's a limited run because I do think it, it's a hard job to be like, but you're like, it's a very specific thing that you're being asked to do to be ready to go on. And also n- you're doing all the kind of shitty stuff of theater and then not getting to perform. But um, were there ever any disasters in the pit? Anything go way wrong? I don't think so. Yeah. I think one time like someone was late. And we like started the show like one, without one violinist, and like they had to call someone else to like run in and fill the spot. That was like stressful. But sure, the, I don't. I I might have blocked something out, but I can't think of anything. Lion King. I just I feel like I think I watched it twenty five times when I was a kid. Oh yeah. And it, some of those songs, I don't know what. I, there must be a German word for this kind of thing. There's something of like, because I know where the song's going, that it feels like torture. And mm. it's not even that I don't like the song. I don't think it's good. But, like, I'm bored by by living through it. It's why I can't see The Nutcracker again. I, my dad made me oh, see The yeah. Nutcracker every year as a kid. And I hear that music. And it, it's I, I don't mean it to come as ingratitude. But I'm like, I don't, I don't want to hear it again. It makes me uncomfortable. That's interesting, though, because people generally like, some, like stuff that's familiar to them. That's why they listen to the same songs. I do. So, there's some musicals I could do over, but there's something, there's some kind of musical catchiness that it's like it's, 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 it's next to boredom. Uh-huh. And it's like kind of concentrated boredom of I know everything that's going to happen and I'm not on the ride. Yeah. Mm. Now, you've yeah. done a lot of private, like weird like side gigs you you played once for someone's proposal is that true yeah yeah what um, any any strange gigs any I incredible played, ones well for the proposal was funny because 
I was, I, they had me go into this hotel room that was booked and just wait there for them to come just in. Just you, not a, just not me. A okay. Just me alone. <laughs> and then this guy, the plan was like, he showed up with his girlfriend and a photographer and like he somehow got her there under some other false thing. And uh-huh. then, then proposed and she said yes. And they had contracted me till eight, but she said yes by like, you know, seven forty. but he was paying me so much that I didn't want to like stop playing before eight but i couldn't tell if they wanted me to like leave and we were both kind of like i was like i was like i can go and they're like play another you know like and it was Uh uh-huh like clearly neither of us wanted me to be there but we were too scared and then finally they were like you can go and then like the guy was like do you want some cake and then the girl was like you know (laughs) i was like i'm just gonna go (laughs) oh my god wait did he propose in in the hotel room while you were there it was a balcony in the room so we were on the balcony Oh, okay, that's good. Because I was yeah. picturing like them going into a hotel room and you just standing there with a violin. <laughs> like, just you. Yeah, no, he them. texted me before they got there so that I was already playing. So oh, that, okay. That that's helped. That's nice. That's um, nice. Okay. I it was, was it was really nice. I was picturing <laughs> you like waiting in the bathroom and then him proposing out in the thing and then you like yeah. coming out with <laughs> your, starting to play. From the closet. Just <laughs> like. That's what Kanye West for Valentine's Day, he got Kenny G to like play the flute. Uh-huh. As as Kim woke up, oh my god! And she woke up and K- Kenny G was in the living room with <laughs> a thousand <laughs> roses or something. Like, Get oh. out! <laughs> that's my theory: is people that are, if they're too romantic, that's because they're crazy. Something's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I also played once a string quartet for a private dinner, so it was like two people and then just a string quartet, and there was a hot tub outside, and they were like getting in and out of the hot tub and like. It was very like uh, we should we shouldn't be here. Uh-huh. Yeah, that is strange. And it was Wait, like an old guy and a and hot dinner. young woman. Oh god. Yeah. Where was it? in New York? Like upstate or something. Weird. Some mansion. That is weird. Yeah, yeah. But I would be uh, the thing is like anytime you're imagining these scenarios, I'm like, I would be so uncomfortable in terms of like if we're we're just gonna talk and they're gonna play like it, like. I know. At like, it's not like a wedding or something. Well, there's lots of things happening. It's just two of us. I would be. They're just hearing us talk. You know. Yeah. 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 yeah I'd feel like, hey, put down, come join us. I'll put a. This I'll is, yeah. put the Sonos on. We'll. We'll let's just. They had quartet. no problem. They didn't offer us a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine they were playing and you put it on without telling them, and then they were just like, oh, <laughs> turn it up. <laughs> he hates classical music. <laughs> Uh, played any weddings? Oh my god, countless oh, weddings. I, Can you play play like the fun, like, or is it all classical? Um, I once got asked to play "Africa" by Toto on uh-huh. string quartet. Which? How does that go? Because I always I'm take the left, take me away from you. Yes. Uh huh. Um, and like she wanted it for the processional and the recession. It was like all Africa, <laughs> um, all string. But it was like a string quartet for just. So it was like, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> it was like a beautiful Africa. Yeah. <laughs> um. So sometimes, but no, usually it's like ceremony cocktail hour, not like the fun part, just yeah. like the classy <laughs> part. Um. One. <laughs> Just Toto Africa. One time I was doing a show and it was like there was musicians and actors. And one of the actor musicians, he before each show would he would play his own music as his warm up, and we would hear it on the monitors in the dressing room. And he was playing and he was like working on this new song. He kept talking about this new song, and um, he was playing it. And we were all downstairs, and it was Toto's Africa, and he had no idea it had different lyrics. He's like da 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 da, da. <laughs> and it was like he would, and we were like everyone was kind of humming, and then I started singing, and everyone was like, "Oh my god!" They're like, "We have to tell him," and I was like, "We can't tell him. He worked so hard on this song. He doesn't know it's that song." But like we, I, I can't tell him because he was so proud of it. He kept talking about his new song, and then he would, and then what does he find out? He <laughs> uploads it to YouTube, and he gets sued, and he's like, "What?" It had different lyrics, but it was definitely the same melody. Oh, that happens a lot. No one told him? No, oh. no. Someone told me the other day I had, a, I had a new joke, and they said that was in Shane Gillis' so special. And I said, Damn. Thank you. I've gotten better. First time someone told me that, I was very mad. And it wasn't yeah. their fault. Yeah. People just come up with the same bit all the time. Oh, no, I copied it. I wrote it down, <laughs> and I said, I want to do this bit. What bit um, was it? It was something, it was like uh, people say this country's never been more divided. We had a civil war. So it was something about oh, yeah, that. Yeah. And then the one that really hurt, I had one for a while that said, I've been dating my girlfriend for a little over a year, so we're almost done. 
And it was like Louis once did way back. Uh, we've been married for ten years, so we're almost done, or something. And it was just like, yeah. fuck, yeah. And it was, and it was, op- it was working as an opener. Damn. When someone takes your op- well, at the first opening line, nothing worse. But it's good when you find out just to, you know. Also, you're like, hey, I had the same thought as this comedian I respect. That's yeah. cool. I don't know if you respect Shane and Louie, but. <laughs> Just morally and ethically. Uh, <laughs> physically, mentally, financially. <laughs> Let's go to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. So loud. Sorry. <laughs> this has got to stop. Better? Better, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> this has got to stop. Uh, this is where we mm-hmm. say, for for all the new listeners that came in, Eric Bogosian, thanks for tuning in. Hope to have you on soon. Uh, if a legend, theater legend, I, I would even need to like look it back up just to see because he did, he did like these crazy one man monologue shows back in the day. Everyone was doing his oh, monologues yeah. for a little. Uh, this is where we talk about something that's got to stop, something that needs to go away. I wrote down a bunch in this pad that I can no longer find. Russell, do you have a this? Has no, stop? someone else go first. I'm, I'm looking Isabel, at my. Do you have a this has got to stop? Limited series. Oh. Okay. Okay. Tell me more. I'm sick of this drawn out six part. It should have been a film. I don't need six yes. hours of this. Learn to edit. Make it 90 minutes. Yeah. Uh, no uh-huh. more limited series, prestige television. Just make a fucking movie. What, it's what? sometimes similar to the documentaries, like the the like re- true crime things, uh, where it's like eight things, and you're like, I think this was maybe a two-hour one thing. At most. At most. Because you're like, it, I definitely, you get into it, and you're like, wait a minute. And then you get to the end of it, and you're like, you didn't even solve this? Yeah. And like, <laughs> wh- why am I not Googling it before uh. I start it? Because that's the other thing. If we start, we're, if we end and finish, and there's no answers, you've just you've just thrown out some hypotheses of what happened in this crime. I, I, that's got to stop for me. Yeah. I, solve it. Figure it out, film people, if the oh. authorities have documentary haven't. especially, because like, I'm, I'm pushing myself to see a documentary sometimes. Yeah. But four episodes, that's a huge four, commitment. I was six, watching the, eight, ten. the documentary about, uh, uh, what's his name? Beckham and, and, uh, ben, and, uh, and Pod Spice. It, bend it. Um, what's his name? No. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know you. David Beckham, Beckham and yeah. Victoria. What's his name? Be- David, David Beckham. David Beckham and Victoria Beckham. Posh Spice. <laughs> but, and, and they kept, there was way too much stuff about uh, soccer. Mm. I was like, enough. I just care about their relationship and the Spice Girls. Mm. I just want a Spice Girls documentary. Ah, and an there, there will be, I'm sure, oh, someday. That's one I'd watch parts of. Yep. I'm fascinated because I, I only know it from the vantage point of a little kid. Same. I was and obsessed. I got the lollipops and I would like, collect all the stickers and I had the Barbies. And, and you're always fascinated because when watching the documentary, like Sporty Spice speaks. And I'm like, okay, so they're still friends. Right, right, right. And then I'm like, well, Ginger's not there. So Ginger's probably not friends anymore. Right. Why did she leave? Mm. All, what kind of money was on the table? Uh, okay. If I could have any band where I like, I want to know what happened. I want to know in S- Spice Girls are in sync. Like I want to know the the real version, yeah. the version where they go Justin Timberlake sucks. That's mm-hmm. the one I wanna. Or maybe they love him, but like or Destiny's Child, and they're honest about Beyonce. It's hard to be. You can't. No one's honest. Yeah, you can't because it's like because it, it it there's a financial element to all of, all the examples. Because I hope Beyonce said. brings them on one show and yeah. gets a bajillion yeah. more dollars. Yeah. Okay, my my this has got to stop is what the fuck? Let me Oh no, that was the okay. It's got to stop for me the goddamn tree in um Rockefeller Center. It I've never seen New York as crowded as it is and I don't usually have to work in Times Square, but it's been a fucking nightmare getting through ever anywhere there because of this tree. It's packed to the gill. I've never seen anything like it. It's not even that good of a tree. No. It's always well, underwhelmed. it's from my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, even worse. Don't talk shit <laughs> about that, their trees. That, that, that tree. Like, there's just lights. There's no, like, ornament. It's, it's yeah. just like a tree. with. There's no yeah. ornaments. Also, the saddest thing ever no is, that, is that the theater I am in is right next to Fox News. And you'll see people taking their picture at that Fox News tree, which is even sadder. Mm. And it's just because it's too crowded to even probably get to the thing. So there, there's people out there settling for pictures with the Fox News tree, which is just a shitty regular tree. You know, you mm. could get in anyone's hometown is a tree that big. The only thing I like about Fox being there is I'm like, yeah, 
They live in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The people talking oh, shit yeah. about New York all the They're time. All here. They fucking live here. <laughs> if they liked you, Montana, they'd fucking be there. Well, they might live mm. in New Jersey or in Connecticut, the people that work there. But sure, but they, they choose to work they in, choose to work. quote, unquote, the worst city in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, cunts. Um, uh, okay, your wife sent some. Your Russell's wife will send a sentence that's got to stop. Yeah. And they're always describing, like, me to a T. Are they? They're always <laughs> like, uh, uh, the, she said this has got to start, which, can you please just tell her how the segment works? It goes stop, uh, yeah. Courtesy campaigns on the subway. You aren't supposed to wear your backpack or keep your purse on your shoulder on a rush hour train, you idiots. True. You. True. I know. I put it down now. Yeah. I've learned. Yeah. I've, I've matured. This is the one. Pole leaning is back, and people don't react to my knuckles in their back. Oh, that makes me so mad. Like, are they starved for human touch? Oh, no, yeah. that is weird. When you lean on someone like that, also it's no, weird. If it's crowded, if it's not crowded, is it okay? It, um, if no one's on the pole. If no one's on the pole, okay. okay. Yeah. But, it, but okay, you're at, that's a very different thing than every, like a, a psychopath leaning on a pole where everyone's doing it. Yeah. The other thing is when you're in that seat and people are like in the doorway and they lean and you're like, you're like, you're so clearly leaning on my head and I can't move it any more than, you you know, that thing. And the other thing is people that have to sit. I'm not talking like, like they have an ailment or they're really old or they're whatever. I'm talking like you see people get on and they're just like little gremlins who they have to sit and they will squeeze themselves (laughs) anywhere. Do you know these people? Yeah. You are one of them. No, no, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you're skinny, so you can do that. Sure, but once I made the mistake of like a tight train and it was a clear seat was I mean there was a seat that was open technically. Yeah, and you And I said I said squeeze your way in there. I squeezed and this this it was like one AM after L O L and oh. this woman she was gonna hit me. Yeah. And it was scary. And it was your wife. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh my my uh my this has gotta stop. I uh, Listen, I, I sometimes it's tough. People say things to performers, and they don't mean ill. We talked about it last week, where they say, "Oh, someone's making a bit." Mm-hmm. I, another one I can't stand. Don't forget me when you're famous. <gasps> oh God, yeah. You know, you know oh. what I want to say. What people who say that to me, I say, I don't even know your name now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah. It's more. I'm more just like. Yeah, then say something cool that'll yeah. make me remember you. Right. It'll, then like, entertain me, Jester. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, hey, I don't even know what your spot. I won't. I want to be like, no one gets famous anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. not even a, <laughs> a thing. Yeah. Or it's like, yeah, I won't forget you. <laughs> Sorry, that's In a fact, different thing. But I'll tell I my, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll tell my security guard, you see this person, keep them out. Because they, they speak to me in stupid cliches that are not fun to engage with. Yeah. Who said that to you? Like, was it uh, someone you know, no, or uh, like just it a was man? It was like a, a, a comedian, but like a, a, you know, sort of comedian. Not even in the New York scene. Just out. Maybe and, it but, bothers you because you're like, bitch, I'm already famous. Yeah. yeah there, oh, maybe that's why it bothers you. There's a degree. There's a degree. Yeah. Final segment. You better come. Your blessing. You better count your blessing. We say one thing that we're thankful for after a, a nice negative show. Russell, do you have thankful for my friend uh, Jordan? He came to visit this weekend to see um, Gutenberg, and it was very nice. He just had a baby. Well, his wife had a baby, and they both came, and it was their first like trip after. The baby, and uh, it was very nice. You know, sometimes people have kids, and it's hard and things. So it's I appreciate the effort. And uh, yeah. who was the producer that night? <sighs> Good question. Um, oh, um, she was on Vampire Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> Nina Dobrev, do you know that name? Great, Gutenberg killing it with the celebs. Uh, my, do you have a blessing? Uh, yeah. I'll go first. <laughs> uh, I just remember this better when the guest ends. Uh, I, I, you know, we released this episode with Jesse David Fox, where uh, again it, it wasn't a, it wasn't the most combative episode, but I spoke my mind uh, about about comedy criticism and my thoughts on it, 
And uh, it's very nice. I have some young comedians who go like, I listened to that episode. And thank you for like, they, they, they just felt like I articulated something that they thought would be cool for someone to say to a comedy critic. Mm. And it feels nice. I, I feel, I went to like New York Comedy Club party, the, the Christmas party, and I'm like, I was like, oh, I'm a older comedian who like, you know, I'm just a different level of, of age and things. And to have like a younger comic up and come and be like, I dug it. It still feels cool. Oh, yeah. I'll get to Seinfeld's level hopefully tonight where I'm like, don't talk to me. Uh-huh. Seinfeld goes, I love talking to comedians. And they go, hi, Mr. Seinfeld. He goes, get the fuck away from me. I should have said I love talking to other rich comedians. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to stop. Uh, though I do want to say Jason Zinneman. He told me I didn't have to correct it. But uh, he did include Earthquake in his best of end of year list. But to be fair, I didn't even bring up the specific list. You were the one who named it. That's on you. Uh, do you I did. I, did I, I didn't. Did I? Wait, I didn't. What, it, what happened? I, I like. I made a critique like a best end of year list. Why didn't it include Earthquake special? Like a really just fucking funny special. Uh-huh. And and uh, in my mind, I was thinking of a New York Times list that J- Jason Zinneman did. Right. I wasn't bringing it up. And then we're all sudden you were talking about the New York Times list. And then Jason told me, uh, uh, pretty bluntly, uh, he did, in fact, include Earthquake in that list. Mm. So I was talking about other well, lists. Well, I think we were thinking of the it. bad specials that he included on the list. <laughs> <laughs> in our defense. <laughs> so, but we didn't name those ones. We, were talking, we did not name those no. ones, and we will not. No, no, we will not. Join the Patreon for that. <laughs> uh, Joe, we do talk a little more shit on the Patreon. So join it. Yeah. Uh, Isabel, do you have a blessing? Yes, this this has become very apparent to me. I'm I'm really grateful that I have a clear vision of what I want mm. in my life mm. because I've had a lot of people ask me advice recently, and I'm like, well, "What do you want to do?" And they have no fucking idea. And I'm like, sure. "How grateful am I that I know what I want to do?" Mm. It's like so many people just don't, and it's so hard. So that's what I'm grateful for. That's amazing. Yeah. What do you want to do? <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just want to keep doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Doing stand-up, making art, and sure. just doing that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have a bucket list. I'm living it. Yeah. I'm trying to get back there. You, you will. I've, I've been in that place before. Yeah. And then I, then I leave it. Okay. And then I... That means you're a good artist. I, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, this coming out on the 26th. Merry Christmas, Debbie Downsiders. Uh, Isabel, what would you like to plug? <clears throat> uh, just follow me on Instagram at Isabel Hagen underscore. Good. That's it. <laughs> Russell, what do you want to plug? Uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram at Russell J. Daniels. Um, you know, final month, coming into final month of Gutenberg on Broadway. Um, what do you think? You're going to get one one more show? I would love one more show, but, you know, who knows? It's just the world. It's, you know. Um, but, uh... You ever, you ever go out for a drink with Josh and say... You ever go out for a drink for Josh, period? They're not... No, they're not... They're, they don't... They... Them doing eight shows a week, it's like... They're living like a hermit lifestyle. If That's it's not you like get a, in the show. If it's not you like take a... Josh out for a fucking <laughs> Sunday. You say, Josh, I got yeah, some yeah. cocaine. Yeah, yeah. Let's go party. Cocaine. Give you one matinee. Give him one matinee, Josh. Okay, I'm not participating in this conversation. All right, Russell's not a part of it. This no. is me, Jamarco, telling no. you, Josh. No. Uh, okay, for me, guys, I'm headlining Philly Punchline, December 28th, 29th, 30th. Please come out. It is a big room. I will be uh, at the Comedy Cellar New Year's Eve. I will be on the stage ringing in the new year. Oh. It's, uh, I've done it before. Oof. It's, it's an honor mixed with you see everyone with their loved ones. Oh. It's, a real, it's a real metaphor moment because I, I remember <laughs> I did it on stage at Governor's. And I'm looking out. Everyone's with their loved ones and their families. And here I am. I got everything I wanted. I'm center stage, the light's on me, I have the talking stick, and I am alone. And I am alone. Watching people with their loved ones. I think you're better off than the loved ones choosing to go to a comedy club. Hey, (laughs) shut the fuck up. No, no, no. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) You shut the fuck up. 
No, 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 no. I love comedy, and I love comedy clubs. And uh, I'll be in uh, uh, Side Splitters, Tampa, Florida, January 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. That's good. Give me eight shows. Um, uh, and otherwise, hope you enjoyed it. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. And uh, uh, what's the best piece of music that you want to be played at your funeral? Oh, um, the slow movement of the WC string quartet. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Tell him, Russell. Subscribe to The Downside right now. Where? Down here. Or here. We don't know, but just do it. Or also, what else could they do? They could follow the Patreon. They can subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, no! Patreon.com slash downside.